The SpaceX and Tesla guy Elon Musk has now decided to reach Mars. Well, he is the world's third richest man, so the drive is real. Therefore, he is planning to take the experience to a $10 trillion project. So let's take a look into how applicable it would be to colonize Mars. When Elon Musk founded his rocket company SpaceX in 2002, the spirit was the same. It happens when you have conquered almost everything on Earth and you look up to the skies and think, why is someone not reaching there yet? So Musk was frustrated that NASA wasn't doing more to get people to the red planet and concerned that a backup plan for humanity wasn't being developed, so he founded SpaceX. Therefore, SpaceX has developed several impressive aerospace systems. Falcon 1, Grasshopper, Falcon 9, Dragon, and Falcon Heavy, a super heavy lift launcher. Well, making these aerospace systems seemed easy, but as we all know, Mars is a cold, ruthless, and airless planet located at a distance of 140 million miles from Earth. So astounding ingenuity is required to land even a small spacecraft there today, let alone a giant spaceship full of people and cargo in the future. That's why SpaceX is investing all its technology, money, and brains to build a space vehicle called the Big Falcon Rocket, or BFR, that will be able to fulfill the desired target in the future. According to the plan, the fully reusable 387-foot-tall system consists of two giant stages, a roughly 18-story tall Big Falcon spaceship and a similarly huge Big Falcon booster. The booster will launch the spaceship towards space, then land itself for reuse. Timelines are unreliable when it comes to human spaceflight, but Musk's ambitious estimates of when SpaceX might reach Mars reveal his zeal to accomplish that goal. Musk has said the BFR's spaceship is the hardest part of the system to get right, so that's where SpaceX is focusing most of its energy and time. To that end, the company is building a BFR factory in the port of Los Angeles, about 15 miles south of SpaceX's headquarters. While that facility is constructed, engineers are working under a nearby 20,000 square foot tent to build a prototype spaceship out of advanced carbon fiber materials. SpaceX is also meeting with NASA to go through a proper plan through which they can decide to keep passengers safe from radiation, starvation, and themselves. SpaceX needs a place to test launch its spaceship prototype and the southern tip of Texas will provide them with benefits. For one, SpaceX can transport enormous rocket parts over water by barge from Los Angeles through the Panama Canal to Boca Chica. Otherwise, the parts would have to be flown or driven in a truck over land. Additionally, few people live in the area, which is a good thing for a company that's filling a gigantic experimental spaceship full of explosive liquids and lighting them on fire. The rockets can also be launched over the Gulf of Mexico, posing even less of a risk to people or objects on the ground. The goal would be to take the small greenhouse to Mars, which will be packed with dehydrated nutrient gel that could be later rehydrated to grow plants. Through this experiment, it will be seen that if the concept of growing life is possible on Mars or not. During the Satellite 2018 conference in March, Shotwell said the BFR should be orbital in 2020, implying that both a booster and a spaceship will be built, shipped to Texas, integrated, and launched by then. However, Musk said there had been no decision on a time frame, adding that he wanted to pull off several crewless orbital test launches before putting any people on board. Musk has said his aspirational timeline has 2022 as the date for the launch of the first Big Falcon spaceship missions to Mars. Each ship would first fly into orbit around Earth, which would use up most of its fuel. Then several other tanker spaceships would launch to fill the vehicle with enough fuel to reach Mars. It's uncertain how many flights or how long this might take. Mars and Earth get close to each other about once every two years, creating windows of time when it's quicker to reach the planet. Because of that, the best months to launch would be the summer of 2022. Depending on how efficiently the Big Falcon spaceship can change its speed, it could take anywhere from a few months to nearly a year to reach Mars. Thus, a landing in late 2022 or early 2023 is likely. Musk wants the first spaceships to be full of cargo and machines that future missions would require. That stuff would be needed for humans to build facilities that can generate power, gather water, bottle up the thin Martian air, and turn those raw resources into methane, fuel, and oxygen for return launches back to Earth. 
Paul Wooster, SpaceX's principal Mars development engineer, gave some new details about this in August. Worcester said the first two crewless cargo missions would confirm the water resources and the locations that you're interested in, and then determine any hazards for future missions, and then start to put in place some of the infrastructures that you'll need, such as landing pads for safer arrival of crewed missions. Recently, Musk introduced the world to SpaceX's first volunteer space tourist, Mr. Yusaku Mezawa, a Japanese billionaire who is paying SpaceX a hefty sum to be the first passenger aboard the BFR. Mezawa purchased all the seats on the vehicle spaceship himself and plans to pick six to eight artists to take the roughly week-long trip around the moon with him in 2023. That mission would be the ultimate proof that the BFR works. He's paying a lot of money that would help with the ship and its booster. Moreover, he's ultimately paying for the average citizen to travel to other planets. Hopefully, the first cargo, supply, and scouting missions go well. SpaceX would then send one or two crews toward Mars. The aim is to reach Mars in 2024. Of the current mission plans, Worcester said each ship would carry at least 100 tons of supplies. By transporting far more supplies than any crew would need for a years-long Mars mission along with bulky gear, SpaceX might circumvent the need for advanced technologies that would otherwise be required to stay on Mars. From that point on, Musk envisions a colony that could begin to form. It will start off building just the most elementary infrastructure, just a base to create some propellant, a power station, blast domes in which to grow crops, and all the sorts of fundamentals without which humans cannot survive. And then really, there's going to be an explosion of entrepreneurial opportunity. Though people doubt the possibility of these plans, yet this is precisely what Musk aims to do, build a backup drive for humanity on the Red Planet. I hope people start to think of it as a real goal to which we should aspire to establish a civilization on Mars, Musk said in 2017. This is not just about humanity, it's about all the life that we care about. Musk envisions sending about 1 million people to Mars at about $200,000 per one-way ticket. He believes that price will be possible given the hypothetical reusability of the BFR. The idea is not to gain profit, but he thinks only if he can afford it, he will be more than happy to achieve this target. To that end, its website hosts an image of a rusty red planet morphing into an Earth-like world. The illustration is a nod to a hypothetical and speculative process called terraforming, in which deliberate and more rapid change in weather will happen. The idea is that Mars could be transformed into a warm, wet world, one better suited for permanent human colonization if we could melt the planet's carbon dioxide-rich ice caps. Mars has less than 1% of the atmospheric density at its surface compared with Earth. Mars had most of its air blown into space billions of years ago. That makes it comparable to a vacuum chamber. Under those conditions, harmful space radiation doesn't get blocked, and people couldn't breathe outside a spacesuit or sealed colony. It's unknown whether terraforming could be done in a sustainable amount of time on Mars. NASA doubts it's possible at all, since there may not be enough gases trapped in the poles to feed a cozy planetary atmosphere. Plus, the effort might require a kind of powerful satellite that could generate a magnetic shield to protect against solar radiation that would otherwise blow away any human-manufactured atmosphere. Experimenting with terraforming may be only one way to tell whether it's possible. Musk, or perhaps his legacy, just might be the impetus that makes it happen in the distant future. That is all for now, guys. If you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments section.